By the end of this video, you are gonna know how to build a garden. These plans will be available to you thanks to my amazing engineer husband who has drawn them all up in CAD and we have made three different versions available to you. All you have to do is use the link down below. I'll try to pin it in a comment and leave it in the show notes as well. I hope this video encourages you, whether you're single, building on your own, have a small space, whatever it may be. I hope this video encourages you that yes, you absolutely can do it. Even if you have limited space, limited time, limited budget, limited know-how, you can do this. You got this. family, Natalie here, and welcome back to Hey, It's a Good Life. I am so glad you're here because today's video has been much requested and is a long overdue. Today's video is all about how I built this garden all by myself with my own two hands. Because here's the thing, I love a few things in this life. I love my cats, I love good coffee, I love my husband, but I absolutely love building things and DIY so that I can grow food, so that I can cook delicious homemade meals from scratch, because is there anything better than eating straight out of the garden? I just don't know what compares. I believe that I'm called to have a regenerative farm and retreat center one day for leadership, where we restore and equip leaders for their missions in life. And this is just part of that. This is part of stewarding that dream. And that's why I do this, but I also do what I do and film it on YouTube to encourage you that you too can start a garden. Even if you just have a small space like me, even if you're living in the city like me, like you can absolutely do this and you don't need a lot of skills or experience. You just have to commit yourself to the process and learning and getting started. So welcome, welcome to our urban farm and homestead. We are here in beautiful, sunny San Diego, California. And I'm so glad you're here. Although I think I already said that. <laughs> now you guys have asked for this video. And when I say you guys, I mean a select few because my channel is still rather small, but hey, each of you means so much to me. And on that note, I wanna say thank you in advance to the YouTube family who always shows up and is always here watching these videos, hitting that like button, hit the subscribe button, leaving me comments and sharing these videos. Thank you so much. I appreciate you more than words can say. If I forgot something in this video, of course you can leave a comment down below or reach out to me. I love helping you guys brainstorm solutions to some of your spaces and situations. So definitely let me know if I missed anything or if you have specific questions about your space. I hope you enjoy this video. All right, so let's talk design. When we first moved to this property, we both looked at this yard and said, yes, we can absolutely envision a big garden here. And we immediately saw this U-shaped garden with a beautiful trellis in the front. And we knew that our dreams of having a garden could absolutely come true here. And all that was left to do was assess that this space had enough sun and really just get to measuring. So in designing the garden, I realized, okay, I've got some little things to work out here, but if I just calculate this all using my fancy iPhone calculator, I can make this work. And I started to sketch this out onto a piece of paper to scale using a ruler to make sure that everything was the right size and actually proportionate to what was happening outside. And soon enough, I had my first rough draft of what our space was going to look like. I had this piece of paper and a vision, and I started to calculate how much wood I was going to need to make this project happen. To save money, I decided to use cedar fence pickets, and that's what I recommend to anybody on a budget. And it makes things really easy, because here's why. Cedar fence pickets come six feet long, and so just cutting those in half makes them three feet wide. And this is what a basic garden bed looks like using my plants. Now my garden beds are mostly a little bit bigger, I'm calling them a medium sized garden bed. And they are almost all nine feet by three feet by 40 inches tall. And 40 inches is give or take a little bit because the ground is actually uneven where I am. So more on that later. But here's the basic idea is taking those cedar fence pickets and some of them cut in half and then kind of stitching them together over two by fours and creating a really solid structure. 
Now I do have one really long bed as well, and this is what I call my 14 footer. This required more sewing or stitching together of the wood. This guy has a lot of two by fours as legs, and that is what helps keep all of the wood together at the seams. And it's really crucial that if you are gonna have any seams in the wood that you go ahead and stitch them up, so to say, using a wood backing like these two by fours. Then once you have all your seams covered with two by fours, you're gonna add two more additional supports made of cedar fence picket here. All right, so now it's time to talk supplies for these raised garden beds. I'm just going to flash these screens before you and encourage you to take screenshots as needed. I'll go ahead and leave these up for a couple seconds at a time. I would say overall this is a project that does not require that much stuff, but it's definitely more than your average project. We like to borrow from people who are willing to lend us things and that helps us decrease cost. Now the first thing you're gonna have to do is remove all of these pesky staples. You definitely wanna remove them because you definitely don't wanna run into them with the saw. Next up, I lined up all of my cedar fence pickets just like so, and I brought them together with a clamp and by doing so, I was able to cut more than one piece of wood at a time to make sure I was getting rid of the dog ears, which you can see here. The dog ears are just kind of that shape at the end of each cedar fence picket. And in order to make the most of these raised garden beds and all of these pieces, I decided to go ahead and cut off the dog ears of the cedar fence pickets just to make it easier for measuring and lining everything up because for raised garden beds, you definitely want everything to be as square as possible. I like to work in a neat workspace when possible and so I made little piles of each item here. Now as you can see, the next step is to sand. I use maybe an 80 grit with an orbital sander and I went over every single piece of wood with it because it's really important when you're staining that you have wood that's been primed well with a sander. It makes the stain a lot easier to apply and it's going to make it a lot more cost effective as well because you won't have to use as much stain. So I definitely recommend sanding all your pieces and priming them for staining. Now when it comes to staining, you can get some eco-friendly stain like I did. Unfortunately, they don't make this brand anymore. Dump it into a paint tin and use a stain spreader. This option also came with a little stick that I could screw onto the end, but I opted to save the $10 and not attach this contraption to a stick. <laughs> now let's talk about the smallest bed design. This is like the basic basic that anybody could certainly figure out. I like to start with the ends and I'll show you why in a second, but it's important to start with the ends because when you bring them together with the side pieces, it allows for a really seamless transition because then you can just bring those long edges towards the very edge of this piece and it makes it really simple. Now these are corner clamps that are really old. They're on loan to us from a neighbor and here you can see me struggling to get the smaller end piece in. But once it's in, you can go ahead and add those long boards. And as you can see, I'm bringing the board all the way to the edge for a nice clean 90 degree edge. All you have to do at this point is secure everything in place and then you're good to go and you can start screwing things in. Now, I like to use deck screws for raised garden beds because it kind of makes the process a little bit easier, but it doesn't mean that you don't have to pilot drill. It really depends on the wood. So I would recommend that you do a test strip and see how that works out and take it from there. Now, the last part of any of these garden beds is installing this inner rail, which is where all of the slats that are going to hold up the soil will lay. This is me really struggling to put it together. <laughs> now let's talk about the medium sized bed. The medium sized bed is what most of my garden is made of. And as you can see, I'm making those end pieces again. And something to keep in mind is you want your screws to be offset from each other. And what I mean by that is here I'm lining all these screws up, but when I line up the screws for the long boards, 
I'll want to make sure that I drill any pilot holes and any screws just a little bit off of where I drilled these screws because obviously you don't want to run into a screw. So just something to consider if you're a new beginner uh, builder. Now here I am kind of doing the stitching technique I talked about earlier. So I went ahead and laid out all of my two by fours and then I played on my phone for a little while apparently. <laughs> um, but once everything was lined up, um, just really shimmying everything into place, this really took a long time, honestly. <laughs> I wish I could say there was an easier way. If there is an easier way that you know of, like definitely leave it in the comments down below. Um, this whole process right here was really time consuming. But like I said earlier, for building raised garden beds, it's really important to have everything as square as possible because these things are going to need to hold a lot of weight and it's important that everything is lined up as best as you possibly can. So here you just see me again drilling those pilot holes, working my way down the 2x4 through the cedar fence pickets, and slowly but surely uh, really bringing those seams together. Honestly, it was at this point in the project that I was really starting to get impatient, and this is where I emphasize in the supplies list that having a good attitude is really, really helpful, as is having like a boombox or some kind of Bluetooth speaker. Here is a corner clamp. It's a great tool to have if you need to build boxes all by yourself. Very simple to use. You put your boards in there, you close it shut, and you're good to go. The only thing that gets a little tricky is when you've got these longer pieces, because when you screw the, I don't know how to describe it, when you screw these in, things can shift. So let me show you what I mean. So let's say I had just gotten this into position. The first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that I wiggle these boards into the clamp so that this bottom corner is lined up at 90 degrees. And once that's looking good, I'm gonna come up here and check this part of the wood. Now let's say it wasn't. Like let's say it wasn't lined up. Well now I'm gonna line it up and then I'm gonna hold it in place and see if when this is lined up, if this is still li lined up. If this part is not lined up, well then I need to keep shifting things until I've got this nice flush line. I don't know why I feel compelled to share this. I feel like this could be really, really basic knowledge, but this is something that has helped me a lot because I think it would be really easy to assume that, okay, well I've got everything in the corner joint. It must be good to go. It must be 90 degrees. And that's just not the case. So I wanna encourage you guys to double, triple, quadruple check your measurements, your positioning, because you wanna make sure that you're screwing in a super even way so that everything is really nice and flush and you don't have screws in at an awkward angle creating weird tension on the wood and causing warping and stuff later on. You wanna make sure that everything's as like perpendicular, parallel, straight, all of that stuff as you possibly can. And this is part of the process of doing that. So I just wanted to clarify, like it's not just about getting the wood into these corner clamps. It's about verifying that everything is in the right position two, three, four times before you start screwing in. So then once you've got that good to go, I like to drill my like holding screws. There's probably a more official term for that. I'll drill into that corner once, that corner once, that corner once, and this corner once and make sure that everything is flush. It's my way of verifying like I'm on the right track here. So once I've got those primary screws in, those first screws in, then I know I'm pretty much good to go for the rest of the drilling and can pretty much just go to town with that. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Hey guys, so I actually broke a drill bit earlier, but this is the drill bit that I'm using. It's very thin. I wanna say it's the 332. I don't know. I have no idea. Whatever. It's pretty thin. So let's get that pilot drilled. So kind of like we just talked about, I'm going to make sure that everything's lined up from the bottom to the top. And then you could use a clamp and clamp this. I actually have some, but if you don't have clamps, it's still possible to do this. And so I'm not going to use a clamp and I'm just going to show you that with your you know, holding it tight yourself, you can do it. I just want to show you guys that this is possible without clamps. So we're going to go one. Oh, another thing to keep in mind is the spacing of your screws. I haven't really talked about that much yet, but these are more inset and the screws that I'm put placing on the longer sides are more out towards the outside because they're going to have more pressure on them. And so you want to make sure that you're spreading, I don't know, keep, keeping the surface 
tension down as much as possible, which by spreading out the screws on the longer side, you're gonna, you're gonna be dealing with the tension a little bit better. So make sure that you're not gonna send your drill bit into a screw. So just kind of verify, you can eyeball it. You could you know, do an exact measurement if you really, really wanted to, but it's not really necessary in my opinion. So, okay, that's lined up. I like it. I'm not gonna be drilling into that screw. Great, so I'm good to go. Also, be really careful because I just burned myself because this tip gets really hot. We're gonna use our special drill bit which came with the deck screws. It's a star tip. I'm not sure how well you can really see that, but it's a star, it's a star tip. So anyway, grab a couple screws. So hopefully this part made sense. Essentially what I wanted to convey to you guys was that I, to make sure that everything was square and straight, I basically drilled one screw at the bottom, or technically I suppose it's the top of the raised garden bed. And I did that in each corner once. And then I went around and did another screw at the base of each raised garden bed. And then once I was happy and knew that everything was lined up and 90 degrees and nice and square, then I went around and did this. I drew, drilled my pilot holes and added all my screws and screwed those in. And then eventually, behold, you have a very beautiful raised garden bed that you built all on your own. Even though it was a little complicated, you figured it out. So good job. Give yourself a round of applause and a pat on the back. Now all that's left to do is move it into position. Now I realize that this looks really heavy, but the benefits of using cedar fence pickets is that it's actually very light. You can move it into a position very easily all on your own. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any footage that I can find of me building this 14 and a half, 15 footer but you get the idea that every seam is covered by a two by four. Now I moved this up on my own and I don't recommend that. So I did eventually ask for help, don't worry. <laughs> um, but you can see all the two by fours are covering the seams and you can also see those cross supports which I just made out of leftover cedar fence pickets. This is my husband helping me get this raised garden bed onto its feet and into position. I don't know if you can tell, but that was the face of pure glee being so excited to see this project finally come to life before me was so amazing. All that was left to do at this point was install these rails for lack of a better word. I went ahead and used the clamps and drilled these in. Now here are those slats which I made out of 1x2s and spaced evenly about one and a half, two inches apart in between all of the 2x4s. And on the very ends of the 2x4s I did cut just slightly smaller pieces to make sure that the soil had support all the way to the end of the smaller panels. And then it was time to line my beds. And yes, I did use some plastic. This is like leftover plastic from a mattress delivery, I think. So you can get creative with ways to save money. And all I did was kind of cut it to size and then use a staple gun to get it into position and then trim down the plastic. Really, really straightforward. And I did this because I didn't want soil leaking out the sides and onto our concrete. We are renting and so everything I do needs to be rent friendly and as stain free as possible. <laughs> The last part of the equation here is adding some ag fabric. I ended up adding something much thicker than this and I've linked it in the description down below. And eventually, after all that hard work, we had a garden. After about 10 cubic yards of soil being delivered and shoveled into these beds, We've been able to enjoy this garden for about two and a half seasons so far, and it has definitely withstood the test of time and the elements, and I'm so happy with how it turned out. If you have any questions, let me know. If I forgot something, let me know. I'm happy to answer it here on YouTube or on Instagram via direct message. And that's it. 
make sure you get your free plans down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.